Hi, I'm Bob Allison with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. Today we're going to be looking at VCar Pro version 10. VCAR Pro version 10 has some great improvements, and in this video, I wanted to highlight some of those. Let's start with drawing tools. There's a very good watch new video on the Vetric website concerning VCAR Pro version 10. What I wanted to do in this video is actually take some of those features that I use on a daily basis that help me be, be more productive. So, you know, probably the first thing is let's look at drawing a little bit. Uh, th this, I think, is a major change. So. Here's an object I've drawn, and we click it again. Of course, you can you can stretch it, and you can rotate it, and all those things. All right, and you notice the box changes with it. Now that wasn't the case before. In version nine, or this is nine point five, when I rotate something, you see the box doesn't rotate, so it makes it much more difficult to size something after that's done. This new functionality is also integrated in some other operations. So, for instance, let's select this and let's rotate it and let's say let's rotate it 45 degrees. Now, you notice that's selected. When I come over here, you have rotation. So, I can say I want to shape something absolute relative or in reference to its rotation. Same thing here. If I want to go over and resize something, it can also be in reference to its rotation. And also, uh, when you actually rotate things, it can be in reference to its rotation, or the, the rotating bound. So at the end of the day, this just makes it easier to create geometry, so it makes me more productive. Version 10 has brought a really nice update to the node editing function. For instance, in the earlier versions, I could select a piece of geometry, in it, but only one at a time. I couldn't really select multiples. Version 10 lets me bring in multiple, so I can window all around that. And then it brings in some more things. So I right click and I say close vectors with the line, it closes all of them. We'll undo that. We'll select them again. We'll right click and we'll close vectors with a smooth curve, and it does Bezier's. We'll undo that. And we'll right click again, and now this time we'll close the vectors by moving the endpoints. So that's a really nice uh, feature and it makes it much simpler to, to create geometry. Let's take a look at some additional functionality in the node editor. So we'll select these two pieces of geometry, right click over that and bring up uh, join vectors with a line and it creates a line in there. Right, we'll undo that. We'll select them again, right click, this time I'm going to join vectors with a smooth curve, and there it is, and that's a Bezier. And let's select this geometry, right click once again, join vectors with a smooth curve, and finally, let's right click again and say close vectors with a smooth curve, and we've created a really complex piece of geometry very, very quickly. The enhanced features in node editing in version 10 is gonna make drawing much simpler. Probably the update in VCAR Pro version 10 that has a bigger impact on how I do things is the tool database. Uh, this is a tool database that I used before in version 9. You see, I basically just organize groups by different kinds of machines. That's not required anymore. Version 10 actually introduces some changes to the tool database. You'll notice you'll see a category that says material and one says machine. Let's look into that a little bit. First off, let's open up the one that says material. Now what this does, this allows me to define different materials that I'm going to use. For instance, right now what I have set up are cabinet plywood and plastic, HDPE. And, and the reason I do that is those are materials I'm cutting right now. But what happens is it lets me put all that information together and separate it because the feed rates are different for those materials. You can also have a tool database set up for machines. In our, my case, I've got the uh, different uh, shop server machines, the 23s in my garage. Here's a setup for the IS, the ISM, and the shop server pro with a five horsepower. Let's look at this tool setup a little differently. Let's go to tool steps, tool database. 
Now, first off, I can hide what I'm not using. So basically, when I have a machine selected here for material, I've only got visible the tools that I've set up for that. Now, for instance, here's a Shop Saber Pro 5 horsepower. Look at the 3 8 bit. Uh, it's a two flute tool, uh, 17,500 inches a minute. Now, I'm going to run out of horsepower. So I, normally I would run that tool faster, but I can't because I run out of horsepower and the servos are strong enough, they just break the bit. So now let's go to an IS, which would have a 10 horsepower typically, and you see the difference in feed rate with a two flute tool, I'm going to 800. But if I go to an ISM, go to three flute tool, let's pick that one. We go to the three flute tool and now I'm cutting at 1200. So that's kind of the differences and that's what's so nice about having these set up like that. So I'm really, really pleased and this is, this is gonna change pretty much how I do things, I think. VCAR Pro 10 has added a lot of power in the area of nesting and tool patching. Let's take a look at that. What you see on the screen here is actually the parts for a typical base cabinet. That's the bottom. That's a shelf, that's a back, that's an end panel, that's an end panel, and this is a stretcher. Now, the, the only small part on that is really a stretcher, so let's look at the node energy. You can see I put the, I put the midpoint or the starting point on the midpoint of a long edge. That's your best chance. That's what pretty much the automatic cabinet making programs do. So we'll incorporate that, and we're going to treat that smaller. We, we basically want that cut out first. Okay, let's see what happens when well, we go to nesting. And we basically say, I'm going to use the 3 8 bit. I'm going to add a tenth of an inch extra clearance. I'm not going to nest any closer than an eighth of an inch to the edge of the sheet. That's our sheet. And I'll let you rotate apart, but only 180 because this has grain direction. So the first thing we do is we select those. And we'll just hit one and hit apply. Then I'm going to come back and select this one and say, okay, I need three of those. Once again, three are required. Then to nest them, I select them like this. Hit preview. That looks pretty good, and I hit OK. Okay, let's look at our tool paths. And we're actually going to load a tool path template. And these are the tool paths. There's a five millimeter drill, dados, grooves. Now, a groove is going to be the back panel primarily. Uh, onion skin. Now, here's what that means. Uh, for the small parts, which are, in this case, it's the stretchers, we're going to go around those first and leave about 30 thousandths. That's called the onion skin. Then we're going to return and cut them out altogether, and then we're going to cut the big parts. That's called return onion skin. You'll see that in cabinet programs a lot. And then all I have to do to apply these is just hit the calculation button, and there they are. And this is just telling me that it's cutting through. We'll preview all the tool paths, and you'll see there's the drilling. There's the dados, there's the grooves, there's the onion skin pass for all three of the small parts, then the, re the return pass, and then the final parts are cut out. Now that you understand a little bit more about how we incorporated return onion skin into automatic tool packing, let's take on a larger job where there's multiple sheets because that's where the real power of VCAR Pro version 10 comes in. So let's do this. Let's go back to nesting. This time, let's select our, all our parts, and I'm going to make five cabinets. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, and I apply that. But then I'm going to go back to these. I need 15 because there's three per cabinet. So we just say 15. We hit apply. Then we'll select them all. We hit preview, and that looks pretty good. So we hit OK. And we'll zoom out here where we can see this. So you see it took several sheets. And you can go through and look at each sheet. Came out pretty good. All right, now, here's what's neat. I come over here to Toolpath. We did before. I load my Toolpath template. And this time it says, Do, would you like to apply this template to all sheets? Yes. And it Toolpaths every one of those automatically. And then over here, this sheet one, actually, it looks like on sheet one, there's only an outside cut. Here's all the different tool paths per sheet. So now all the tool padding for that whole job was just done automatically. This is really, really powerful. Final topic I want to dig into on VCAR Pro version 10 has to do with making lithophanes. 
Now, there's a bit of misunderstanding about what the software actually does and, and what it comes with. Well, for one thing, it comes with a V-carved tool path. That's right up here, but that's not making lithopanes. And to make it even more confusing, when you get to simulation, it says lithopanes. So there's got to be a relationship. So I decided first to go find, I found that photo that uh, Vectric uses of Charlie Chaplin. And now, if you've ever done lithopanes, not every photo works very well, so I thought, well, if they used that one, it'd be fine. Now, here's my problem. I've got this nice photo, but down here under Molly, I don't have the button that turns that into a 3D surface. Aspire has that, but VCar Pro doesn't. So I had to figure out, well, how do you get that operation taken care of? It turns out there's a number of websites that convert images into lithophanes, and, and they're free. So I found this when I searched image to lithophane and it's 3dp.rocks and slash lithophane. And so it's real simple. You basically upload an image. Now there's a couple of settings that you want to, uh, image settings that you want to do. You want this to be a positive image because what happens is when you do that, the darker areas will be thicker. It's real important. So all I have to do is go to images and upload my image. And there's Charlie Chaplin. And then all I have to do is download. And now I've got my image. Now let's make our lithophane. We're going to start out with a piece of material, 8 by 10 by a quarter inch thick. White uh, Corian works pretty good. And we'll say OK. OK, then we go to the modeling tab, and we need to bring our surface in. And it's on the desktop. There it is. And this window, it's an STL, okay? So we want to say, well, what, what do we want to do with it? Well, first off, it's, it's really big. So let's say that make sure this lock XYZ is clicked. Let's make it about uh, 8 inches wide. And we hit Apply. Make sure that this is all the way down so that you, you get, get all of it, and we hit OK. And there is our image. So now, but now that's, we're not ready yet. There's a couple numbers that you have to figure out. Now, there's two ways to do this. Uh, one way is to actually open the model itself up. And there's a couple things. One is, uh, think about this as being a 3D surface, and the height is from low to high. And so what should that number be? Well, you can experiment, but I've had pretty good luck with 0.11. Right, and that has to do with how high, how actually from the lowest to the highest, how tall the image is. Now, the other thing, this base height, and that's how close to the bottom of the surface, and the base height number is 40,000.04. If, if you use those two numbers, it's going to work pretty well. So I hit close. All right, so forth, so good. Then we come over to tool paths, and we go to set. All right, now here's what, this is the area that matters. This, it controls where within your material that lithopane is. Well, I've already added the 40 thousandths, so I want that to lay on the bottom. So that's where I want it to be. And if you look at, kind of see that? See, so when I slide this up and down, that determines where that is. So I want it on the bottom. So basically just put it on the bottom, that'll be fine. And we'll hit Okay. All we have to do is do a finished tool path. So we'll do this. I'm going to use an eighth inch tool. You can actually use smaller than that, but we'll start with an eighth inch ball nose and I'd use a tapered one. Okay. We'll cut to the model boundary. Um, we'll do a raster at minus 45. Let's see what we get. Now this one takes a little while. There's a lot of tool pathing here. What I'm, the reason I'm doing 45 is, is I'm going to start at a corner and, and work across. That way I don't have to have a rough pass because those conical tools don't break very easily. Now, let's, that's the first tool path, all right? And then let's go ahead, let's do the same thing. Let's copy this. Let's open it up and let's make it uh, the other way. So I'm cutting in both directions. Okay, now let's do our simulation. Here's the easiest way I found to do it. First, we want to look directly at Charlie's face. There's that. And then we want to come over here to simulate. And we want to make sure this is clicked. And then you see the slider. 
Okay, start on one end. You can actually use your arrow key on the keyboard to move through there, and you see it's gradually as it goes, the slider goes down, you start seeing Charlie. How about that? Let's do this a different way. Uh, let's go ahead and bring our surface in. So we go modeling. We'll bring our STL in. There's Charlie. Okay, the setting should be the same. So we want to set this at 8 inches. Apply that and make sure this is slid all the way down and hit OK. So that brings in Charlie Chaplin. All right now, instead of messing with these surfaces over here, let's just do it a different way. Let's just go straight to the tool path and let's go to this set. So we basically, we want to set the height. So the model thickness, remember, we set that at 0.11. So I do that. I hit apply and then close. And then where is that within the surface? Well, let's let's set it from the bottom, our 40,000, 0.04. And so that should give us the same relationship. So you might think that's easier. So we hit OK. All right, now it's time to do our tool path. We'll do our finished tool path, minus 45. That takes a while because there's a lot of calculation going on there. So in terms of mechanically, there shouldn't be any difference whether I change those heights over in the, in the model or whether I did it in the tool path setup. The tool should see the same surface, so it really shouldn't make any difference. You have to decide what's easier. And of course, like we did before, we'll also we'll switch this 45 too. Seems like I've, I've had better luck if I cut something both ways. All right, so what we'll do is we'll take this, we'll copy it like we did before, we'll open it up, and we'll take the minus off, and that'll give us another cut. Okay, looking good. Once again, it's going to take a while. The problem with lithopaints, the first time I saw lithopaint, I thought it was absolute magic. But the problem you get into is if you're trying to make money cutting lithopaint, it takes a long time to machine it, but they make unbelievable presents for people or presentation things. So you kind of have to look at it that way. I'm not sure you can make a living cutting lithopaints, but you can make some people happy with them. Okay, we're almost done now. Now, in order to see the simulation, we actually have to run the tool pass. So let's let's get these turned off. Let's take the first one. Uh, let's just preview it. Okay, then let's preview the second one. Like I said, you normally can't tell much. Now, we want to look at the front of it. And then we should be able to go over here to our slider and start moving that across. And I'm just hitting the arrow key on the keyboard, and you can see it start coming through. Now, remember, there's no photo there. There's, there. There was no photograph involved in this. This was all done because of that surface. So it's just, it's really, really nice. And uh, so with just a little minor input from, from a, a free website, you, you can make lithopanes with version 10. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. VCAR Pro 10 is certainly something I would upgrade to. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.